Hey girl, hey. You are listening to season two, episode two of the Cherry Lounge podcast, and I am your host, Tanisha Cherry. In this episode, I'm spilling all the tea on my favorite social app, Clubhouse. If you're not familiar with Clubhouse, it's okay. I'm going to be sharing with you everything you need to know. If you follow me on Instagram at Tanisha.Cherry, you've probably seen me posting weekly about my Clubhouse rooms. I promise you that every time I post, I get at least one message asking, what is Clubhouse? Shocking, right? Well, not really. (laughs) Clubhouse is still fairly new. And with it still being an invite-only iPhone app, there's still lots of people who don't have a clue what I'm talking about. First thing first, Clubhouse is a drop-in audio app that launched back in April 2020 by Rohan Seth and Paul Davison. It's still in beta mode, which is why it's still only an invite-only app and just for iPhone users, but don't worry, you Android crybaby users. (laughs) An app is on the way for y'all, so sit tight, okay? Clubhouse currently has 10 million users, which is insane considering they only had 1,500 in May of 2020. Now it's been valued at $1 billion, and it ranks number five in the App Store under the social networking category. Talk about tech goals, okay? I'm still here trying to figure out my genius idea that's going to make me a billionaire. So if one of y'all nerdy hotties in Silicon Valley have a great idea and you need a, you know, creative touch on it, call me. I'm here, and I'm single. Wink, wink. (laughs) Clubhouse to me is set up like a school, kind of. So follow me on this. The home screen is referred to as the hallway, and it reminds me of when you're walking down your main hallway at school, either in junior high or high school. You know, the main hallway that's always connected to the main entrance. And you know how when you're in that hallway, there's always a bulletin board of upcoming social events, you know, important safety things. There's a trophy display the main office, the guidance counselor, pretty much everything you need to survive that school (laughs) is in that main hallway. So the clubhouse hallway is kind of made up the same way. It's made up of a bunch of icons to help you navigate the app. There's the magnifying icon where you can find people and clubs to follow, an open envelope icon that alerts you of how many invitations you have available, a calendar icon that indicates all the upcoming events happening, a bell icon that shows Recent notifications like contacts who just joined the app, new followers, invites to join clubs, messages from Clubhouse support, all kind of things. There's also a photo slot for your profile picture that will bring you right to your profile page. And down at the bottom, there's a green button to start a room. And the most important feature of all, the rooms, you guys. The rooms that everyone talks about. (laughs) Here you'll see different rooms where people are discussing a specific topic which is noted in the room name. I know, that's a lot, so feel free to go ahead and rewind that last part back if you need to. Once you enter a room, there are different sections, kind of like how the club has the DJ area, the VIP, the dance floor. Clubhouse has two sections, the stage and the audience. There's also a midsection in between the stage and the audience labeled followed by the speaker, but those people are still technically in the audience. But I love to call that the VIP section because everyone sees you and they're like, oh, somebody on stage follows this person. They must be somebody. Let me check on their profile. The difference between the sections are people on stage have the ability to unmute their mic to speak, whereas people in the audience only have the ability to listen to speakers. Now, if you're ever in a room, you'll notice that sometimes people on stage have a green icon. The person who started the room automatically becomes what we call a moderator and they will have a green icon with a white asterisk in the center, and that icon is attached to their profile picture. And by default, they are placed on the stage. To move from the audience to the stage, you have to put a request to the moderator by using the raise your hand feature. And the moderator will get a green notification on their side, letting them know that so-and-so has requested to raise their hand to speak, and it's up to the moderator on whether they want to bring that person up to the stage or not. Moderators have really cool features. They can bring people to the stage, move them back to the audience. They can mute and unmute the mics of people on the stage. They can make other people on stage a moderator and also give them these same features. And they can also end the room. So they have all the power. The rooms showing in your hallway are all conversations happening right now. The reason why you're seeing these specific rooms is because someone you're following is in that room right now. 
So it's really important not to follow any and everybody on the app because people be into some strange things and you don't want to open up Clubhouse and see a bunch of rooms you're not interested in because the app will become very boring for you, okay? For example, if you follow a bunch of people who only frequent rooms about The Bachelor or Love Island, no shade to (laughs) y'all, but those are the only rooms you're going to see. And that's great if you like those shows and want to listen to people talk about them. But if you're like me and have never watched those shows and have no desire to, you'll be on Twitter every day tweeting, logs into Clubhouse. I hate it here. Logs out. (laughs) Don't be one of those people following everybody. Be intentional and try to audit your following list frequently to keep your hallway in check. Okay? For a more visual walkthrough of how to navigate Clubhouse, check out my video on my YouTube channel, Tanisha Cherry with an extra Y, titled, What is a Clubhouse App? How do you use it? 2021 Beginner Walkthrough. And if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. I post new videos every Tuesday in the morning. Make sure you check it out. One of the most common things I've heard people say is that Clubhouse is very intimidating, and that's why they're not on the app or the reason why they don't like the app. And I can completely understand that because I wasn't always the chatterbox that I am today. I still have my shy moments here and there. I know that's very hard to believe, but growing up, I was a child that was deathly shy. Like, I I was so shy. And even now, I still have my shy moments, and I have to talk myself through it. So my advice for anyone feeling that way is to find rooms covering topics you're knowledgeable about. That's actually what ended up leading me to starting my club, The Creator Lounge. I was frequenting all these influencer and social media marketing themed rooms with a bunch of people. And I'm not being rude when I say this, but <laughs> they didn't have a clue what they were talking about. Anyone that knows me knows that misinformation of the influencer industry makes my blood boil. Why? Because there are a lot of people online trying to be successful creators and they're really trying to do their due diligence of researching And unfortunately, they fall victim to gimmicks and the scams of coaches (laughs) or larger creators who are looking to make a quick stack off of them. And I'm not saying that's every coach and every large creator that has um, any sort of printable documents or courses. No, there's just a small group of them. And it's really unfortunate because we're supposed to be an industry of people supporting one another and scamming people is not supporting people. But anyways, (laughs) When I started hearing people dedicate three-hour conversations to media kits and telling people to work for free um, to grab the attention of brands because brands won't pay you until you have X amount of followers, y'all, I was over it. (laughs) And I said, nope, I am starting my own room because the girls want the info and I got it for free. No fluff, just gems. All right. So if you're someone who has an opinion, feedback, or knowledge to share on anything, Step into them rooms, raise your hand, and speak because I guarantee you there is somebody in that room that's listening and the information that you provided was so valuable for them. And that's really how you start getting into the mix of Clubhouse. Moving along. So in my opinion, Clubhouse has become a huge success because it launched during the pandemic, it promotes two-way voice communication, and it also drives people to your other social platforms. They really took the things users like about Twitter, Instagram, and podcasts and put it all in one place without trying to take out any of those apps, which I appreciate because it shows that they're truly about building community. It's a social network that actually feels social in the right way. And that's what people are looking for right now. Something else that they've done really well is listen to their users, okay? Unlike Facebook, Instagram, they have an actual team you can contact to provide feedback and report issues you're having on the app and actually have it resolved. Clubhouse also hosts frequent town halls to address user concern and update us on changes coming to the app. And they also use this time to flesh out concerns that users have or um, things that we want updated. Facebook Instagram has been around for more than a decade and has yet to implement a feature like this for creators who have literally helped build the success of the app, which is honestly really discouraging because it kind of makes us feel like Y'all don't care about us or our opinions. You guys keep bringing out these things that you say are creator-focused, but you can't even implement the small changes that we're asking for. I get it. The chronological feed is never coming back. I get it. We're never going to get that. But there are so many other concerns that we have that you guys just seem to not care about. Like, why are creator accounts still um, being hacked and we're still having so many issues trying to retrieve those accounts? You know, there should be something streamlined 
you know, as a backup measure for in the event that your account gets hacked, that you're able to get it back. And still, there's nothing. Like, you guys know this is happening, and still nothing has happened. And because of this, a lot of creators are starting to retreat to building communities outside of Instagram. Have y'all noticed the increase in blogs and podcasts, TikTok accounts, and YouTubes that have been created in the last few months? Yeah, I have too. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. A question I've been getting from a lot of creators and people managing creators is how can creators leverage Clubhouse and how can you convert Clubhouse following to your other platforms? And this is a really great question and I've actually been having a few Zoom meetings about this because, you know, I guess people really like my perspective on things and how I explain it. But yeah, <laughs> it's a really great question. So first thing, as I mentioned before, hopping into room topics that you can contribute helpful information is always a win. Again, raise your hand and hop on those stages. Just being on the stage area will have people creeping your social handles to see what you're all about. And make sure that you're linking your social handles. You know, your Twitter, Instagram, that's the only two that you can link right now to your profile, but link them. Because people are going to click on it, check out your page, and see what you're all about. And they may even send you a message um, also to ask you any follow-up questions. Next thing, start hosting weekly chats. About what? Anything you can talk about for 20 minutes unprepared, okay? That's your starting point. I'm not telling you just to go into a room and just wing it if you're really nerv nervous and scared. No. <laughs> but if you have a topic that you can really just go on a tangent for 20 minutes, that's honestly your go-to because 20 minutes tangent and then you do, you know, the rest of the time um, of people doing Q&A with you where you're bringing people up from the audience um, to the stage area, that 40 minutes will go by very quick and look, you already had a one hour room. So yes, definitely that is your starting point. And here's a freebie. Instead of starting a Twitter rant or posing a question to Instagram stories for your followers to answer, start a clubhouse room under that title and open the discussion to everyone. So a great way to bring your community from other social sites to Clubhouse is to schedule an event for, say, 10 or 5 minutes from now, right? Take a screenshot, copy the event link, and post it to your other platforms, letting people know, hey, I'm about to go online to talk about XYZ, join me in 10 minutes, and attach the link so they can click on it. Also let people know you have invites and to let you know if they need one. A lot of people on Clubhouse have a large following on there, but have an extremely smaller following on Instagram. Why? Because they're keeping the conversation on Clubhouse and they're not giving people anything to engage with outside of the app. Clubhouse should be looked at as a supplement to everything else you have going on, not a replacement. Let me repeat that again. Clubhouse is a supplement, not a replacement. So when you're on Clubhouse, you should not only be plugging your other social channels, but also be consistent on those mentioned platforms. If people see your last post in feed was a month ago and you haven't posted a story in 24 hours, they're not going to follow because they're under the impression just visually looking at your overall page that you spend all your time on Clubhouse and you never update your other platforms. And that's the only way they can truly connect with you. So make sure you're still keeping up with your other platforms and also shouting them out when you're on Clubhouse. If you have a YouTube video, a blog post, or a newsletter that matches the topic of the room you're in, mention it. In fact, make it the link in your bio while you're in the room so people can access it right away. Make it easy for them. For example, when I'm in Clubhouse, I'll always mention that I have a Clubhouse newsletter where people can access the notes from previously hosted rooms under my club, and they can get it by clicking the link in my Instagram bio. Every time I mention this, I get a ton of new subscribers. You have to give people a reason to convert. Mine is that I only host these rooms scheduled once a week and people see that I'm on Instagram every day. So they're going to follow me on there to keep up with my stories and also see when the next room is. The next thing is to start a club. If you have a large community online on whatever platform, it doesn't have to be clubs house per se, or you're already hosting regular rooms, start a club so that you can become more searchable on the app. And so you have a set place to host your rooms under, okay? Hey loungers, if you're enjoying this episode, make sure to take a screenshot and post it to your IG stories tagging me to let me know what you think has contributed to Clubhouse's success. All right, back to the episode. Now, if you're familiar, Clubhouse does have a website called clubhouseguides.com. 
And that's actually where you can get more information on how to utilize the app. Recent town halls that are happening to submit questions or your feedback and also to figure out how to use the app itself. It's a really good resource and tool, so go and check that out. But that's also where you would submit any requests um, to have a club approved, okay? On there, it suggests that you host three rooms once a week at the same time before submitting your request for a club. This is suggested so that you have a um, higher priority of getting your club approved because there are a lot of requests that are happening right now that they're having to navigate through, and their team is still fairly small. So they've urged people to do that before submitting a um, club request. Now, I actually only hosted two rooms before getting my club approved. So I don't know if that's because I just happened to fall in the time that they did a massive approval, um, a batch approval. I don't know, but I did it only after two. After two, I knew that I was serious and I wanted to start a club. So I just went ahead and did it. And it got approved within a couple of days, actually. As I keep mentioning, Clubhouse is still in beta mode. So... Any clubs that are active right now before they open it to every single body and especially before they um, create an Android app is going to be OG clubs, okay? These are going to be the clubs that are going to be the most popping. So now is the time to really make your mark on the app and start those clubs if you're serious. Don't just start a club for no reason, okay, guys? The last thing I want to say is to collaborate with other creators. I started my first room by bringing my girls Kaylee and Carly on board and now it's our thing that we do together. And it's created a new level of support between the three of us. It's also um, given a lot of exposure to each other's communities and more opportunities for our individual brands. And it's also given us a space to connect with other creators in Canada and the U.S. who we may have not crossed paths with before this. And that's because Clubhouse strips away all the aesthetics, the filters, and the fluff, and it leaves you with conversation that leaves a lasting impression on you. I have met so many creators like this and I've connected and I've become friends with a whole bunch of them off of Clubhouse alone. So collaborating with other creators by hosting rooms, maybe having them do a takeover of your club and you would take over of theirs, whatever the case is, but collaboration is really key. The other thing I want to mention is don't just collaborate just to collaborate because I've had a lot of people ask me to help me moderate my rooms and if you're familiar in my room, you know that I have two other co-founders who host my rooms with me, who are also moderators, so we don't need a fourth. <laughs> and then I also have a lot of people that, you know, sit here and say, hey, I would love to host a room with you in your club, but I don't even know them. I'm not familiar with them. I don't know where their knowledge base is or their strengths are. I don't know what the conversation is going to be. Like, a lot of people will be like, hey, saw you on Clubhouse. I'd love to connect. Connect how? Like, be genuine with these interactions, you guys. Don't waste people's time. I hate when people waste my time. And I feel like it's a waste of my time when I have to probe people with a bunch of questions to figure out what the heck they want from me. Because I don't have a problem with people asking. It's that a lot of people just are not professional in their approach. For example, I reached out to a brand owner of a resource that I use. And I reached out to her in her DMs on Instagram. And I said, hey, girl, I see that you're on Clubhouse. My name is Tanisha. I am the founder of the Creator Lounge on Clubhouse. We have 7,000 members. We host weekly creator chats targeted toward providing creators with resourceful information that can help them level up their brands and just help uh, make navigating their life as a creator a lot easier. And then I go into my whole spiel about, you know, maybe their brand if it's something that I've been using. And I'll let them know that I'd love to have them come on either next week or the following week to host a room with me and my co-founders. And if they'd love to have anyone a part of their team join, I would love that as well. Like, I actually ask them. I don't just say, hey, I'd love to collaborate on Clubhouse. Like, honestly, I'm getting to the point where I'm about to stop replying to those messages because it's a little frustrating. But I also get that a lot of people don't have the experience, so they just don't know. <laughs> they don't know better. So that's also the reason for the club. I'm trying to educate people on how to maneuver better in this industry. Now, Clubhouse is a platform where you can grow fast the more you participate. And the best way to find your way around the app is to truly participate, okay? I frequent a lot of different rooms to see how other people are operating their rooms and clubs, and it's been really helpful for me. In fact, that's where I got the idea to provide recap notes. So join different rooms um, that other people are hosting. Maybe the topic even doesn't even have to do with anything that's of interest of you, but just go in there for five or ten minutes and just see how they're operating the room and what kind of people they're attracting, what titles they're using in their topics, what the bio is in their description of their profile or even their club if they have one and go from there. And don't forget to also send people messages after the fact. If you have follow-up questions on, you know, 
how they're navigating the clubhouse space. Don't be scared of popping people's DMs. I actually find that people who are on clubhouse are really responsive in their Instagram DMs. And I don't know if that's just all of a sudden, but every single person that I DM from uh, on Instagram from a clubhouse room that I was recently in, they get back to me right away. So that's always a plus too. In the most recent town hall meeting, it was mentioned that they are working on the ability to link your profile and club and also higher quality audio, which is always a plus. They also mentioned some things I found really interesting um, about brands have been reaching out to Clubhouse, the owners and the people that work for Clubhouse, to request to be set up with seasoned users to help moderate conversations um, in rooms that they want to host. Which brings me to my last point about Clubhouse. Everyone wants to know how they can monetize on the Clubhouse. At the time of this recording, Clubhouse doesn't have an in-app function, but they are looking at ways to support this. And they do support creators making money, okay? They're not against it. So in the meantime, if you're a club founder with a lot of followers or you host regular rooms with a consistent audience size, consider having your room sponsored. And this is another free advice that I'm giving to y'all, okay? So write this down. Consider having your room sponsored. And you can offer them two choices. And this is just two I'm thinking off offhand, okay? Off the top of my head. They can be a silent sponsor where their logo is just present on stage and they say nothing. And everyone that comes on stage or into the room, they see that Nike has sponsored this conversation that you're having. Or maybe they pay you a little more and are giving the role to reset the room every 15 or 20 minutes depending on the time length of the room that you're hosting. So maybe you're hosting the room for one hour and maybe every 15 or 20 minutes, whatever time is decided upon prior to the room having been created, maybe the Nike uh, rep comes in and says, hey guys, I just want to reset the room real quick. Thank you for being a part of this chat. It is sponsored by Nike, blah, blah, blah. And you know, in this reset, they can mention whatever they want to advertise, maybe a new product, a service, or maybe they just want to do a bio um, of the company, whatever the case is. But that is something that you can definitely look at. Now is the time to reach out to brands to explore these options. It's a really great method for targeted brand awareness. It's also a great consultant service to offer to brands outside the Clubhouse app. Remember I told you this because I'm always giving people the freebies, okay? And this is a really good one because people aren't really doing this. And I see this being something very popular happening in the next few months. So make sure now is the time you implement, okay? That is all I have to say about Clubhouse for now. If you're a brand or a creator who needs a more in-depth one-on-one chat with me, I do offer consultation services on my website, changecherry.com. This is a paid service, and the purpose is to give you one hour to pick my brain and ask me all your specific questions, okay? So the link for that is in the description. So make sure you guys go ahead and book one of those if you need it. Thank you guys for tuning into today's episode. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to the Cherry Lounge podcast where you'll find a new episode every Monday at 6 a.m. Mountain Time, 5 a.m. Pacific, 8 a.m. Eastern. Also, don't forget to leave a review and hit me with them five stars, y'all, okay? It helps me out a lot. For more real-time content, head on over to my Instagram at Tanisha.Cherry. I'm out, y'all. Later.